The biggest planet in our solar system is covered with stripes and swirls, which are cold, windy clouds of ammonia and water floating in a rich atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter's iconic red spot is a giant storm much bigger than the size of the Earth, and it has raged for hundreds of years. How much of a challenge would it be to land a spacecraft on its surface? The problem here is, Jupiter doesn't really have a surface to begin with. It is a gaseous planet with an interior hot enough to melt tungsten, the metal with the highest melting point in the universe. The pressure and the astronomical force of gravity would crush any spacecraft. But let's assume we decide to deploy an aircraft for a Jupiter mission. There are some things we must know first. With a radius of about 43,000 miles or 69,000 kilometers, Jupiter is 11 times wider than Earth. It sits at an average distance of 484 million miles or 778 million kilometers from the Sun, and it takes sunlight 43 minutes to travel to Jupiter. Now let's deploy the aircraft. As you near, you'll see Jupiter's beautiful tapestry of colorful clouds and spots. The gas giant has three distinct cloud layers in its skies that, taken together, span about 44 miles or 71 kilometers. The top cloud is made of ammonia ice, while the middle layer is likely made of ammonium hydrosulfide crystals. The innermost layer is water, ice, and vapor, all in pure hydrogen form. You are now hurtling towards Jupiter at 110,000 miles or 177,000 kilometers per hour, thanks to the pull of Jupiter's gravity. The first layer of gases won't trouble you much, but as you near the second layer, the denser atmosphere will hit you like a wall. Your speed will decrease rapidly to 300 miles or 482 kilometers per hour. Here is where you would experience the brunt of the planet's rotation. As the fastest rotating planet in the solar system, Jupiter has winds whipping around 300 miles per hour. After getting through 74 miles or 120 kilometers of those clouds, you will experience a pressure of 1,470 pounds per square inch. The Galileo probe reached the same milestone before losing its connection with Earth after the pressure destroyed it. It was the furthest point on Jupiter any craft has reached. You will continue traveling 430 miles or 700 kilometers deep. You might still survive if you have a craft like the Trieste submarine, the deepest diving submarine on Earth. The pressure here is an astonishing 1,150 psi. Let's assume you made it through that pressure too. You would reach a point where most of your equipment would lose function. The planet's core will absorb all radio waves, so communication efforts will be futile. 12 hours into your journey, and you wouldn't even be halfway to Jupiter's core. At roughly 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers, the temperature hikes up at almost 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 3,300 degrees Celsius. Jupiter's innermost core has a pressure two million times that of Earth's, and it burns hotter than the surface of the Sun. In conditions so extreme, the very chemistry of hydrogen changes. Hydrogen molecules get closer to each other and get packed so tightly that their electrons break loose, creating a new substance, metallic hydrogen. This substance is highly reflective, so if you tried to shine a light to look around you, it would be impossible. Metallic hydrogen is also as dense as a rock, so it would generate a buoyant force on you equal to gravity pulling you down. But this force is counteracting the gravitational pull of the planet. You would be stuck in an up and down loop. As soon as the forces balance out, you would be floating around Jupiter, further away than anyone could ever reach you. Your journey would end here. So far, nine spacecrafts have been deployed to observe Jupiter up close. The latest one is NASA's Juno craft, which is studying the gas giant from orbit. The spacecraft, which arrived at Jupiter in July 2016, is the first to study the planet's mysterious cloud-shrouded interior. 
While the planet is unlikely to host life in the near future, its moons might still be habitable. Europa is one of the likeliest places to find life elsewhere in our solar system. There is evidence of a vast ocean just beneath its icy crust, where life could be supported. And it wouldn't be a bad sight looking up at the night sky and seeing Jupiter in incredible proximity. <laughs>